I did some research uh, a while back um, on the on genetics essentially and genetics in a population of of animals and uh, could be animals or plants. I had a set of equations that describe this population's uh, growth over time and how the genes of one generation are transmitted from one to another. We know because of the theory of evolution that populations can change. The genetic structure of populations change because the environment can play a role. Um, we, for example, know in the case of sickle cell anemia that the trait for sickle cell anemia arose as a mutation that enabled uh, many, uh, uh, many peoples in Africa to uh, survive the effects of malaria. Um, this is an example of how natural selection confers uh, on um, a population a genetic trait that enables it to survive uh, something in the environment that could be quite deleterious. So in that sense, it's a blessing, but of course, uh, no blessing comes without a curse. And of course, the curse is that um, when you have two of these traits present in one person, that person has sickle cell anemia. But the point is that natural selection works on a population to change its genetic structure. Not just natural selection, but mutation. And my equations focused on natural selection. And the question is then, how, um, how or does a survival of the fit fittest always mean that fitness increases, that the fitness, if you can measure that, of a population increases constantly? Well, um, for a, a long time, I think it was always implicitly thought that that is the case. And I looked at the question of, well, what happens if the population is changing? Usually in these studies, the population size was always considered constant. If the population changes, then in fact, the population change could also change fitness so that one set of animals with a genetic trait at low population sizes may be much fitter than relatives who did not have this trait. So one genetic type of population could be most fit at low population sizes. And then another, and, they're all, and this is one interbreeding population. So you have a population with many different genetic types. And one set might be quite fit when populations are low. When populations are high, another set could be fit, the fittest at that point. And so there could be an interchange between the two. The population changes, the genetic structure changes. And as a result, what can happen is that genetic types which would ordinarily die out can remain in the population because of the dynamism, because, it, because it's changing. The same thing can happen if you have a habitat size, like you have, let's say, you're trying to design a park for roaming animals. For example, suppose you wanted a park of a certain size. That might actually dictate that, that animals have a certain genetic type, that that, 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 that that population could be maintained if it were of a certain genetic type as opposed to another, if you had another size. So by changing the size of the habitat, you also change the genetic structure of the population and you select. You know, so habitat size is an agent of natural selection, just the way disease would be an agent of natural selection or mutation. I keep track of not only the size of the population, but I also keep track of the number or fraction of the population that has a certain genetic type. And then I use uh, basically the laws of inheritance. There are certain laws of inheritance if 
you have uh, parents of a certain type, then there's a certain fraction of the offspring that will have certain genetic types. So it's a combination of Mendel's laws and a generalization of Mendel's laws of inheritance together with, and these can be described in terms of equations, and then equations describing how the population size itself changes. So it's a combination of those. And then fitness, fitness itself essentially if you remember from uh, biology, or you may be about to have this in your, in, your, in, your, in your courses, you will see that, in fact, the way fitness comes into the picture is that fitness affects the birth rate. It affects how many offspring a particular uh, animal leaves. It, also, it can also affect the viability or death rate. So that's a way in which fitness is defined.